I have read Twilight uh, a few times, actually. Uh, I wanted to know what the hubbub was about. But I hate when people compare The Hunger Games to Twilight simply because it is a, you know, a first person through the eyes of a female. There's very little similarity. And whereas romance is the focus of Twilight, it's certainly not the focus in The Hunger Games. Right. And they just, I think that the reason that it was put, you know, all these comparisons started in the beginning was because of these, you know, obviously the love triangle, and that's, that's the thing. And because Twilight is such a box office smash that any time you can link a movie like that with another movie, you do it and try to get the buzz. But I also think that because of that conversation that, I'm sorry, I don't know who was just speaking. I think it was Sam, but uh, whoever it was. Uh, the it was uh, Tim, sorry. Yeah, it was Tim. Yeah, that was- that was Tim, okay. the figure skating star, who was actually. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim made that point. I think that that's also something, the controversy as well, because you have somebody like, you know, cause I've had a lot of guys, like, well, isn't it just like Twilight? And then a, a fan who's read it is like, no, it's not like Twilight. And then this conversation starts. And then, like I said to Mark, I'm like, Mark, just watch the trailer, and you'll see it's nothing like Twilight. You see it, and you realize it's, it's not. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't have a soap opera crap to it. It's, 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 it's a lot more to it. Well, you've really touched on an interesting topic, and we made Twilight, as you listened last week, that was a big focal point of our yeah. show. Uh, and it, it is a hot-button issue. There are some people who love it who also like Hunger Games. Uh, there seems to be, I think, more people who don't, uh, from what I've observed. And there's kind of a, a, a an alliance between Harry Potter and the Hunger Games, it seems like, and <laughs> these Twihards are a little bit in their own world. <laughs> it's the sense that I'm getting. Yeah. Not that they mind. Uh, so it's interesting to watch these fandom wars or friendships and alliances that build. Personally, I think it's great to have uh, dialogue. And, you know, I think the risk is, as uh, one of you was saying, uh, was it Tim who was saying that you hate when they compare it? I definitely know what you mean. I, I think it's, it's what kind of comparison are you doing? Is this a healthy comparison or is this, a, a, you know, a, a, a trashing back and forth between people right. who are trying to, make, trying to make the Hunger Games into a love triangle uh, involving children that are born in two weeks and eat out of their mother's stomachs and all kinds of other bizarre <laughs> stuff. <laughs> See, for me, so, any time they're mentioned in the same sentence to me, I, I take it in the negative. But just because I think that after the, fir- the first Twilight, it just it, it, it totally went downhill. Just, especially this last movie, nothing happened for 45 minutes. Nothing happened. So I just and you never. I don't think you're going to get that in the Hunger Games at all. I think that you have a thick story with um, with rich characters, and I'm I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I think that uh, I mean, we were from, saying. Oh yeah, go go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, Sarah. I just you know from a feminist point of view, um, I mean I don't want to dish Twilight completely, but it always bothered me that the heroine, whenever she gets in trouble, just basically stands there and waits to die, and then a man rescues her and. <laughs> I really like it that Katniss is always rescuing the boys around her. And you believe yeah. it. You believe it, too, when it happens. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, that's, that can't be true. And Jennifer Lawrence fits her role. Like, this definitely could happen, and I can't wait to see it happen. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Yeah, no offense to Bella, but if I'm in trouble and someone's coming at me with a spear, I'm going for Katniss, not Bella. In that situation, <laughs> that's who I'm turning to. <laughs> I think we can all agree on that one. Well, I guess Bella's also pregnant with a vampire baby, so it's kind of hard to move around when you got a little vampire inside of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think also uh, <laughs> it's safe to say, too, that uh, in Katniss's case, I wouldn't even feel emasculated. I'd be more than happy to have her help me. So, But that's just where I'm coming from. I can't speak... <laughs> For everyone, isn't this a great group tonight? This is this has been so much fun already so far. We haven't even discussed anything. It's been, uh, <laughs> it's been about as much plot to this show as there was to the last Twilight movie. <laughs> oh, okay. oh God! Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, where's my ring shot? I can't find it. Teresa, don't be mad at me. I know you're a big fan of of uh, Breaking Dawn. If you want to say something in this defense, feel free to chime in now. If you want to. Uh, I got a really good collector's cup at the movie theater. It, it. It's really good. 44 ounces. Holds a lot of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, what were you going to say? I was just going to say that out of the Twilight movies, Breaking Dawn is my favorite. And really? I think, 
Yes, it is. Breaking Dawn is my favorite Twilight book, too, because in the second half of the book, Bella completely changes and her character completely changes. And I like the actual point of the book for Breaking Dawn being the fact that the bully backs down when you stand up to him. Obviously, they're changing that for the film, but that's okay. Um, I mean, I'm not as big of a fan as I used to be. I still enjoy them. To me, they're like just fluff. I mean, they're good fluff. I enjoy. And there's nothing too real intellectual about them, you know, as far as I'm concerned But anymore. But I think, if anything, the film Breaking Dawn proves that you can do a lot with a PG-13 rating. I know we talked about this last week. But, I mean, literally, you can get sick to your stomach watching that scene. And all that, and most of that is happening off screen. So they can do anything with a PG. I mean, they can do far more with a PG-13 rating than I ever thought they could. So I think um, for Hunger Games, there's not going to be any problem. I don't need to see the gore. Hearing it or seeing the aftermath will be enough. And I think that that film right there just proved it. So it's kind of like you watch it. And, I mean, I saw somebody on Twitter say that people were vomiting in their theater when they were watching that thing. Oh, God. So, <laughs> I think uh, if they do something similar to that, I think they'll be uh <laughs> I think they'll be okay. I mean it's um I don't know, it's just just how I feel about it. So I don't know. I I I'm looking forward to the second half to see what they do, so you, you can get away more with uh with violence and especially, you know, with the with the MPAA, you, they'll 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 do more with violence than with, like if you do it's the sex and nudity that they hit you with the R, so you can definitely get away with a lot more violence uh, and make it a PG thirteen. So what we really have to worry about, and, and Mark, turn off your ears for a second. Slight spoiler. Uh, earmuffs. Let's close them for a second. Um, we have to worry about the cave scene. That's what we're really going to have to be more worried about is what you're saying. One, one, <laughs> well, not a lot goes on in there. I don't know. I, some of that was left to my imagination, maybe a little too much. But, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I think so, I mean, Adam. I don't. I don't think we'll see anything too crazy there. But no, I think I think this is a great point. And obviously, if it gets an R, it's going to be really bad for the film. So you, I have a feeling that they're very caught up with the logistics of what the PG-13 and R disparity, where that delineation is. And I, I'm confident. Now, watch me choke on these words, but I really feel like they'll do whatever it takes to make sure it ends up on the right side of the line. But I could I be wrong, of course. I agree with you. I think Gary Ross, when he when he took this on, he he knew the fan base. He knew what everybody was expecting, and he he and you know and, and Collins worked together to bring together the most true version of this. I'm still wondering which ones they're going to split into two because I'm afraid that that could hurt the storytelling. But again, I'll, I'll oh, wait right. to see. 